Welcome to Santos Brothers Eats. Food worth mentioning. So um, let's just get this started. Welcome back to Santos Brothers Eats, where we're talking about food worth mentioning. I'm with my brother, Chef Jeff. How are we hey, doing today, how's it Jeff? going, everybody? Oh, Excellent. sorry about that. No, that's all good. It's uh, all good. How's it going, everyone? Hope everyone has a good day. Um, yeah, we're back here with another podcast on food worth mentioning. Absolutely. And so I was looking at Jeff's social media feed, and uh, Jeff's going to transfer this particular picture over to the Santos Brothers Eats Instagram. But he he had some food. I think, was that Saturday night, Jeff, that you had it? Or, uh, or yeah, Friday? Saturday, Saturday afternoon, but Saturday, yeah. It was Saturday afternoon, and it was a, and it was a picture of some poutine. Now, those of you that remember our first podcast, we talked about uh, Smokes Poutinery, and I like poutine. I'm not a hater, but I'm not a super fan either. But when I saw a picture of this poutine, I uh, the, right when I saw Jeff, I said, we got to be talking about this on the podcast. And so it was some fried chicken poutine. So tell us a yes, little sir. bit about that, Jeff. So we, uh, Diane and I went to Hamilton, which is just west of Toronto. And they have an amazing food truck scene there. Uh, like everyone I think knows we're from Toronto. Toronto has a lot of food trucks, but Hamilton has really embraced the food truck scene. I think because they're smaller, so they have a more concentrated area to have food trucks um but this one food truck they actually now have um what they call a, a bricks and mortar location so the actual restaurant they still have their food trucks when they're back open after the pandemic uh, and they're called the dirty south and they specialize in mostly like hearty home food southern style cuisine and what we had we had the fried chicken put, uh, poutine which ken mentioned and it's Louisiana style fried chicken. So the chicken itself, there's not pieces of chicken, like, like a thigh or drumstick or breast, but it's like chunks of chicken. And they were coated in a Louisiana style mixture. So there's a bit of heat to it. Uh, then deep fried and then added to fresh cut fries, cheese curd, gravy. And then they also had a bit of buttermilk ranch added to it as well. So if you just imagine good poutine, and then add on some fried chicken to that with the cheese curds. It was a delicious meal, I must it, say. It looked really good. So the Dirty South is a food truck? They're, they originally were a food truck, but then they had the opportunity to also add a restaurant um, into their collection. And so they went ahead with the, with the, uh, with the actual restaurant. Um, but as we know, it's still a pandemic. So they had a good curbside uh, system uh, you can either call ahead and wait outside, or you can actually go in, order your food, and then just wait outside. Uh, it wasn't too busy when we were there, so I went in, put my order in, and waited outside. And they, within about 10 minutes, 10 15 minutes, um, the server just came out and had my food, and we were on our way. So awesome. it was a really, really good experience and clean too. Uh, just to add on to that, so we had the fried chicken poutine, but then uh, we also had. Uh, their pulled pork tacos um, and the pulled pork was done perfectly is good amount of spice and heat to that um, and also had the nice crispy fried onions not onion rings but crispy fried onions so just a bit of cornstarch or flour with thin, thin, thinly sliced onions or shallots actually uh, there's a smaller version of onion and just quickly deep fried to add a bit of a crunch and texture to the tacos and it was a good portion too. There were two tacos in there, um, but they were like at least an inch thick of nice. meat and, and toppings. So it, it, it was a good food item. Um, but I've had Dirty South before, like I said, there's a, a big, there used to be a big event in Hamilton, Hamilton called the Super Crawl. It, it was usually I think in October, I believe, or maybe late fall and they, like I said, Hamilton is a smaller town just west of Toronto, and they would close off most of the major streets downtown, and they would set up a big main stage um, and have some of the, the uh, Hamilton's bigger rock, um, rock bands. Um, I, can't mention, I can't think of anything right now, but, you know, and they had smaller stages, but another thing was food trucks, and I remember going to Dirty South, at Supercrawl, um, 
But actually, actually going back into my records, I actually saw, met Dirty South, or experienced Dirty South, I should say, at what they called a food... Where is that picture? Sorry about that. Uh, oh, no, that's not it. Anyway, it's a food truck event in Niagara on Peller Estates. And there I actually had what they call their... Uh, oh, I had chicken and waffles. Mm. So on, the, so my, on my Instagram, I'll also share that with, uh, with us as well. It's basically chicken and waffles, as you know it. Three waffles, and inside is two pieces of fried boneless chicken. So the same chicken as in the poutine, but it's a bigger piece. Boneless, of course. So And the, the waffles are nice and thick, and had a maple bacon and maple syrup. Wow. So, yeah. It was, and again, it was a nice big piece. And... Um, yeah, just delicious. It so was, this dirty cells, this sounds like something I got to try. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully when food trucks are back, um, or we could go to the Hamilton one day and try them out that way. Uh, but we should try it. So yeah, so, and also on their menu, they have, uh, it's called a big pig. So barbecue pulled pork. So it's the same pork that's in the tacos. But in this one, it's more like what you like, Ken. Like it was more of a sandwich. It's in a cheese bun with their onions and some coleslaw. Mm. Um, and they also have um, a beef brisket hoagie, so a beef brisket in a pretzel bun. And at, they actually do have some vegan options. Um, a friend of mine, is, he's mentioned he likes the food that I post, and the, this one place has vegan options. So, for example, they should have a pulled jackfruit mac and cheese. Um, I know a bit about jackfruit. We mentioned it with the Toron last week, but I guess it has the same texture as pulled pork, so they use that instead of the pulled pork. And I know they also have a vegan cheese, so I'm guessing they're also making – you could ask for this item with the, uh, with the, the vegan cheese, uh, mac and cheese instead of regular cheese. Gotcha. I've actually had pulled pork, like pulled jackfruit, like this oh, really? is pulled pork. Yeah, I've actually okay. had that. And it's – it, you know, obviously it's, it's sweeter than, than pulled pork, but it, yep. it pulls off a very good imitation. Okay. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, like you might be able to slip a bite to someone if you didn't tell them, like it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty close. See, so, I'm always amazed um, when vegans or vegetarians, like how they find the time to find um, alternatives for meats or any protein per se. Um, like whoever thought of jackfruit and pulled pork, they were just eating jackfruit and noticed the texture and they decided to go for it and say, let's see how I can modify this to become a pulled pork substitute. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually had that pretty good. And like I said, you eat, I, I bet you, you could slip it by some people if you yeah. didn't tell them, although they might not think it's the best pulled pork they've ever had or anything, but it's True. certainly, you know, it's that option out there. Yeah, And so, you know, th this dirty South place sounds like a lot of the foods that, uh, that, that I would love, you know, that, uh, oh, yeah. the fried chicken poutine, that waffle sandwich, you said three waffles. So was it kind of like, I don't know, like Big Mac style, like kind of like, cause you said three waffles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the picture online that and I took too. There's, there's certainly a, a big piece of chicken. Oh, that's what it is. So, so bottom waffle, you have your chicken piece, mm -hmm. second waffle, then you, they, that's where they put the bacon on there. That's the bacon. Gotcha. That's the bacon. And then it looks like there's lettuce uh, with arugula and, uh, yeah, arugula. And then the buttermilk dressing. And then the top waffle to, to finish it off. Nice. That's, that sounds really – and you had that? Like, I've had that, that, yeah. I remember, wow. like I said, I, I was in Niagara Falls at the Peller Estates Food Truck Festival. And I remember having that as well. Excellent. I wonder yeah, if, like is that a regular thing on their menu? Do you know? It is. It is. Wow. Yeah. I'll make sure to, we'll, we'll share this on, on our Instagram site as well. Uh, there's three good, six good options to try. Yeah. That sounds like I could just, area. I could just imagine just having the fried chicken poutine that, and, and that's probably enough, but you know what? I'd also want that waffle. And so yeah. those two together. And then of course you said the tacos, those sounded good. Um, yep. I'm more partial to the waffle, but then Diana was saying that the tacos tasted really good. So, Top, yeah. yeah. So she mentioned that. So now I at least want to try those. Mm -hmm. Wow. It sounds really good. Now I will say this is that what attracted me to that picture of the fried chicken poutine. And in all honesty, I was 
a little disappointed when I heard what it really was. And that was okay. because there was that white, there was that buttermilk ranch on it, right? Yes, yes. And I looked at it and I thought that that was country gravy. Ah. And, you know, you know, that biscuits and gravy, you know, down mm-hmm. south, that biscuits, that, that particular exactly right. gravy, I thought that was on the poutine. And, you know, while I still want to try the, the fried chicken poutine, it was a chicken gravy, so it was a dark mm-hmm. gravy. And, and so it was the, you know, the, the ranch made me think it was uh, country gravy. I still yeah. want to try it, but I, you know, if someone's out there and they got a country gravy poutine, man, I would, I'd be yeah. all over that. And that's something. Actually, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. you mentioned since, since we're in Canada, maybe people up here don't know what country gravy really is. And since you live in Utah, you might be able to explain it better for, for oh, everybody. So country gravy, I think it's from the east side of the United States. I think it's, you know, down south that. And it's, a, it's, it's gravy. I think it's made out of, I mean, you can make it either out of bacon or sausage. And just kind of like after you fry sausage or bacon, there's that fat that's left in the pan. And then you can make a gravy out of that, you know, with like mm-hmm. milk and flour and butter. Yeah. I don't know the actual process. I'm sure that Jeff knows it. And I'm sure that he knows how to make country gravy. Yeah. But it's that white gravy that's usually served breakfast time on top of biscuits. And you can usually, I bet you a Denny's would have it. Certainly yes. any Denny's in the States would have it. Oh, um, for sure. You know, any kind of diner may have it. Um, but I, I, it's rare that I get to see it in Toronto because I remember no. I'll bring it back to our first episode when we were, um, we talked about, um, smokes poutinery. They have a sandwich called Peter's denial. And I remember reading it. It said a chicken with gravy and corn. And uh, I automatically thought, Oh my gosh, it's that country <laughs> gravy. And I thought I've got to have this sandwich. And while it was a great sandwich, right. Right. It was dark gravy, and I kind of thought to myself, it would, it's just a lot more effort. They already have the gravy for the poutine. Of course, yeah. they're going to put that gravy on the sandwich instead of making a different batch just for people who might happen to order chicken that day. It's just, it's just not economically feasible, or maybe not feasible. No. It just doesn't make sense, you know, just to make this extra pot of, of gravy yeah. just for one sandwich. And so, uh, but yeah, that is a game changer to me. If I could have some poutine with some, uh, with some of that country gravy on it. Oh man, I'd be, that's a poutine that I would probably want for the rest of my life. You know, (laughs) that that's something there, but I still want to try this, uh, this chicken poutine. So we got the chicken poutine. We got the, the tacos. You said six things. So, um, yeah. So the big pig, um, the big pig, which is the pulled pork in a bun. Oh yeah. Cheese bun. Uh, the brisket hoagie, so beef brisket in a pretzel bun, and then their jackfruit, uh, their yeah, their their pulled jack, their mock jack, uh, pulled pork with using jackfruit. Oh, sorry, pulled jackfruit mac and cheese. That's what I'm trying to say. There we go. Oh, so that was a mac yeah. and cheese. See, the jackfruit that I actually had was in like a sandwich. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, like you know, a pulled pork sandwich type of thing. So yeah, interesting. So, yeah, go ahead. So, so basically what the country gravy is, um, like Ken said, I do know how to make it. It's basically what they're, they're making a roux, so which is a fat and flour. And then a bechamel is a, is the French version is a French term used for a white sauce, but it's, it's only like a bit thicker. So for country gravy, they add more milk to make it into more of a gravy, more consistency, but yeah, it's either the sausage fat or bacon fat or even chicken fat instead of just regular butter or oil to make when making a roux. So that's what, what country gravy is. And Ken, good news. I just looked, Denny's in Canada does have country gravy, uh, yeah. according to the picture that I see there on, on fried chicken. Unfortunately, so. the one I know, the only one I know, and there's probably one, like I know, I remember there was one in Pickering, and I, I don't know where right. now there are. So um, There's one in Mississauga. Okay. And there used to be one downtown. I think that one is closed, is, has closed actually, I think. I could be wrong, but yeah, there's one in Mississauga for sure. I think I remember Cause, the location downtown. Yeah, because uh, you know me. Because when it's your birthday, Daniels will give you a free grandstand breakfast. Ah. So I always try to get my free birthday grandstand breakfasts. So the, would that, would one of those options be like to have the country gravy? Like, or there's only one type of grand slam. There's only one type of grand slam, but I'm ah. pretty sure if you wanted to, you could have a country gravy on the side for an extra charge. Absolutely. So, I remember yeah. when I worked in uh, when I lived in the Utah. I was a nurse down there and the, the cafeteria 
I remember I would work a night shift and that cafeteria right. would have biscuits and gravy and I would go down there <laughs> and I would totally have yeah. that. And it was so inexpensive and it was so tasty. Yeah. And you gotta understand Jeff, like that the gravy had these like chunks of like yep. sausage in it. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. so good. Yeah. Actually when uh, Diane and I go to Florida, uh, we uh, we usually, usually usually go to a place called Cracker Barrel. Um, I, I think it's more southern states. I haven't seen any in New York. Um, oh, Cracker Barrel, they got that in Utah. That's popular. You That's popular. Yeah. So you, you know too. Uh, but they do. Uh, so when the first time I was at Cracker Barrel, I know it was Country Gravy, and I said I got to have biscuits and gravy, um, and, uh, and and something with, with grits as well. So mm. sausage and grits and biscuits and gravy. I had to have one of those. And yeah, I do know Country Gravy as well. Not, well, not as well as you do, but. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, and if it anyone wants us to rate their country gravy, please let <laughs> us know, and you know we can certainly, you know, do our best to give it a try and give it a rating. And speaking of ratings, um, you you didn't try the jackfruit, right? So you can't give that a no, rating. no, okay. we didn't. No. So Unfor let's yeah, we start with the, the poutine. Uh, let the, why don't we rate that? The poutine, um, it's a Louisiana style fried chicken, so there's a bit of heat to it. Um, and as we said in the past, I'm not a big heat fan, so I'll give it nine out of 10, uh, just cause of that add heat to it. Like there's enough cheese curds and gravy to, to, quell, to quench it down a bit, but that's my only thing. Like the, well, hold the on. chicken was, you also mentioned, cause I'm not sure we didn't mention this earlier, but this was yesterday cause we were talking about it is that you yeah. mentioned that when it was served, it wasn't hot enough that the cheese curds melted. Oh, you're right. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that, that is correct. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's because it's curbside pickup. So we didn't have it fresh there. And it took about 10 minutes for us to go to where we're going to eat at the park. Uh -huh. um, so that could be it. But to me, even though the cheese curds weren't, weren't melted as such, then I, I'm still giving it a nine out of 10. Wow. Like the taste itself was worth it. Um, if it wasn't as hot and if, if, if a gravy, if we ate it fresh, <clears throat> and that would have like that could have bumped it up to the ten out of ten. Really? Okay. Yeah. And then the tacos. Yeah. Uh, that was more for Diana. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure she'll give it a ten out of ten. Um, I'm not a big taco fan myself, but the pulled pork was delicious, so I'll give that an eight out of ten for myself. And then um, the, that waffle sandwich. Yeah. Probably ten out of ten, if Oof. I remember correctly. Like it, it sounds just, it was really good. good. It, it sounds, is. Yeah. Was that the chicken in there? Was that kind of like it was? It was. Uh, it's breaded, right? Breaded chicken. Was um, it like hammered out or no? It must have been. Okay. It must have been because <clears throat> they put it into a sandwich. Like so, it is boneless. Mm -hmm. I'm. I don't remember if they offered either like a white meat or dark meat selection. Okay. Um, but yeah, it had to be boneless, and I'm pretty sure it was it was it was pounded out for a bit. Yeah, just just to give it to more more space and more more surface area for all it the coating good. and the goodness. Yeah, sounds way good. And then, yeah. is there anything else that you had that you wanted to rate? Um, no, we just had the two items, unfortunately, uh, from Dirty South. Well, yeah, that yeah, was it today. yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's spectacular. And mm -hmm. then you wanted to talk in about another place and yeah this place so, is in hamilton as well right so like i said hamilton has a great food truck and restaurant um um what do they call it? like uh oh neighborhood not neighborhood but community yeah community that's, that's a, a good great word, food yeah. truck and restaurant community um and one of the food trucks that we really love was called meat ventures and i'm gonna um, stop for one second here i mean i'm yeah. just thinking the name alone makes me want to go and say, well, what is, what is this all about? Like if a place yeah. is called meat ventures and it's a food truck, you yeah. know, there might be other places that might have better food, but just from the name, I'm going to want to investigate and see what on oh, earth yeah. they're talking about. So I, I had to interrupt you there. <laughs> no, that's right. actually they had a good marketing, their food truck, standard side food truck, but the owners, they actually bought like, um, uh, marquee style letters and that had M E A T. And they put it right on top. So if you're looking at a, at a sea of food trucks, this little meat sign would pop up, you know, be right at the very top and would light up meat. So you're like, oh. Ah. So, you know, it's another eye grabbing technique they had. Um, but yeah, so food, meat ventures, we actually um, I discovered them in 
2014, we were in a small town called Waterden uh, for their arts and music festival, which is just a bit northwest of Toronto. And it's a little, it was a little, you know, little one, one street only. They had like some bands and some food trucks. But what caught my eye with this one, they had bacon creme brulee. So it was creme brulee, so an egg custard with a nice crackling of uh, caramelized sugar on top. Mm. But just in, in the middle and just popping out on the side was a piece of candied bacon. So, and oh, sorry, they also had bacon jam at the bottom of it. So My bacon goodness. jam at the bottom, a nice custard, the creme brulee on top of the brulee, and then a piece of candy bacon in, in one little, you know, it was just perfect. The perfect amount. Sounds good. Oh, uh, goodness. It, it, it was. Um, and that caught my eye first, but when I looked at the menu, they had Tocino sliders. And we mentioned this in an earlier podcast, that Tocino is a Filipino dish, or a Filipino sort of sweet pork meat. Um, Usually serve for breakfast? This is for breakfast. Usually, and yeah. This one, looking at the menu back then, it's, uh, they, yeah, it's basically sweet Filipino bacon with a green mango. So I, I'm guessing they're, they're, they're sort of mimicking achata. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was in a garlic lime cream sauce and in like, uh, like little, I, I guess they use pandesal if I had to guess. I was going to ask, uh, did they use pandesal? So yeah. um, I don't think we've mentioned, have we mentioned pandesal before in the I podcast? I don't think we have. Well, no, I don't think we have. For so. those of them, even if you haven't listened to an earlier podcast, what is pandesal? Pandesal basically is a sweet, a small sweet uh, bun uh, from the Philippines. Um, there's also a thing called Hawaiian buns, so that's a bit similar to that. Uh, but pandesal is sort of our version of a sweet small bun, usually for breakfast as well. Okay. Um, we with butter, or we dip it into coffee, and that's how we eat it. Yeah, and when we see it's a sweet bun, I don't want you to think it's sweet like a donut. It's, no, no, it's right. not yes. like that. It's it's sweet like the one of those Hawaiian buns is sweet. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like that. It's not like, like a donut or, or, you know, that the, there's sugar on it. So right. I don't want you to mistake that. Cause you might be thinking of, you know, that we're just sugar overload. It's like the sweet pork <laughs> on a sweet bun. That's yeah, it right. is sweet pork on a sweet bun, but it's, it's not like that, you know? No. So as a matter no, no. of fact, if, I, if given a choice, I will pick savory over sweet. You know, if someone gives me, offers me cookies versus chips, I'm probably going to take the chips. It's just the way yeah. I am. So That's they it. had Tocino sliders, on pandesal. On pandesal, right? basically, yeah. Ooh, that was it. Sounds good. Um, so, yeah. So, when I, found, when I saw this, I asked, so who's Filipino? And the gentleman that was doing the cooking, his name is, I, I get to know him, his name is Salar, and his wife, uh, Janine, is, they, they found Meat Ventures. Uh, he's, well, I'm half Filipino. So, that's sort of the friendship. So, you know, they were busy. said, oh, well, I hope to see you soon. And just over the years, between 2014 and 2019, wherever they are, we try to find them. Uh, they've been to the Scarborough Food Truck Festival. They've been to the Downsview Food Truck Festival. The one in Niagara. Uh, we're on their Instagram and on their Facebook. Um, and their menu has expanded over the years. So, for example, they have, they've offered a flip dog, which is basically langonisa sausage. Um, I'm looking look at the past pictures. Uh, it was served with a pineapple mint slaw and teriyaki mayo. Um, Have you had that? Hot dog bun. I had that one. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, it's langanisa and a nice uh, with pineapple and, and, and mayo. How was and the it was bun? Delicious. It was good. actually this is the one that you you tried, Ken. Look at the picture I'm looking at. This is one in Scarborough. Oh really? Um, yeah, if I'm correct, it was just a, a, a like a nice fresh hot dog bun. Okay. But they because, had also the casino slider that day too. Very nice. Because something yeah. like that, you could have a really good you know, meat and really good slaw. But if the bun is lacking, it, it will ruin the whole thing. Oh, it so, was, yeah. So that's why I asked, yeah. well, how was the bun? Because, it, you know, yeah. uh, langonisa with, uh, with, a, with a pineapple mint slaw, that sounds good. So that's, I'm it glad does. that tasted good. So we'll yeah. dig out those pictures, put them onto, the, um, to, oh, onto yeah. our Instagram. And we'll also make sure that we share, um, you know, all of uh, Meat Ventures' uh, social media up on the that's show right. notes as well. So and just finish off, uh, they also had a bacon fatty. So for those of you that know Filipinos, we like our spam. Okay. But Salar, he's a master chef. He actually makes his own sort of spam version. Um, so he made his version of spam, like a pork loaf. But he actually baked it in bacon, believe it or not. 
So imagine spam wrapped in bacon and then cooked off. And then he made a sandwich out of that with, it looks like it has potato chips and a mayo and then and, and mentioning garlic bread. So then, yeah, wow. again, he doesn't use the same bun for all his dishes. So he, he, he mixes it up. Nice. And I think I had this just because it's a bacon fatty, like bacon and fat for us is like, oh, yeah, we need that. And then he also did a takoyaki dog. So takoyaki is a Japanese street food. Usually it's um, small balls of batter. And the main protein is usually octopus, which is taco, Japanese is taco. Um, but they, they might add pork or vegetables to it as well. Um, but from, the, from, from here, uh, I think he, just, he made um, like a regular hot dog, but he added like the takoyaki flavor to it. There was some um, uh, donbu, uh, some fish flakes on there. And um, donbu is seaweed, by the way. Um, wait, donbu, yeah, wait, was, wait, wait, wait. It, so donbu, is that different than nori? Yes. So nori okay. is the sheets. Yep. And donbu is more, is, is more of a, you know what? I apologize. No, these are nori sheets. You are correct. Okay. So Sorry about nori that. sheets. No, okay. no. Thank you very much for correcting me. Nori sheets, but he's slightly thin. Okay. And then sprinkle on top. So, okay. Yeah. So what's yeah, donbu? Because I, it sounds donbu, familiar. I apologize. Donbu is a, is, is a fish broth oh, they use okay. for Japanese cooking. Oh, okay. Well, good thing that we clarified that. So, so yes. it's a nori, but it was kind of split up, like kind of almost like sprinkles on top. Is that right? Right. Wow, exactly sounds right. good. It does. The unfortunate thing is, even though we talk about Meat Ventures, they have actually closed down. They, their last food truck was in 2019, and they've expanded again. So it's he's always smart he's always thinking of, of more things to do so he's he's partnered with his brother and they've ordered a, a poke style uh restaurant in hamilton mm. um poke is basically a raw fish bowl so it's usually tuna or salmon um, or octopus and in there you would add salads or greens or uh rice like some starch and then edamame or another salad and then uh, with the dressing so it's made it was it was, came from hawaii um and with with some roots in, in japanese cuisine as well but made for you know because it's very hot in hawaii most times so they want a nice refreshing salad um that incorporates some of that japanese techniques to it mm. so they have a stall in the hamilton market but then his uh, current sort of uh restaurant is called my pie m-a-i-p-i-a p-i sorry m-a-i P-A-I. Okay. And it's a tiki bar that specializes in Detroit-style deep dish pizzas. Um, and well, hold on a second. So we can't get, like, the Meat Venture stuff anymore? Like, unfortunately we... not. Oh, wow. I know we talked all about it, but I, their, pra- <laughs> their, their, their food still, you know, it, it's still good to me. It's, but I'm just talking about the Chef Salar. Oh, He's yeah. expanded more and more. Um, and so, like, his restaurant, my pie, um, they is are sort of open in time just before the pandemic started. So they had like a week or two of actually opening. So we couldn't get to them as of yet, but they do offer curbside pickup. Um, and we're, st- and because they're in Hamilton, it's not very convenient for us to go all the way there sometimes. So we're waiting for a good time. We're going back to Hamilton to order it online and pick it up and we'll try it out that way. That sounds but good. But from the pictures I see on Instagram, they, they're, they are doing some good stuff. Um, let me try to figure it out. Um, some of their ingredients, what they're doing. Uh, so it's my pie tiki. Um, so, so peppers, 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 sausages. Oh, it's, okay. yeah, there's so many varieties But they, they specialize in, in Detroit style deep dish pizza. Yes, right? they do. That is yeah. such a, that's such an interesting uh, chain pivot from, yeah. from, uh, you know, like to, uh, to you know, sliders to deep dish pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And I'm pretty sure they'll have some sort of Filipino twist on the pizza, oh. uh, either now or they will soon. Oh, yeah. To get back to his roots. Um, but yeah, it's like you said, the word pivot. They, you know, always have to change in, in this industry um, to make sure that you know you're, you're keeping up with the trends. Absolutely. And that's a thing. That sounds good. So we have. Don't, we don't have a chance to rate the pizza because you haven't tried it no, yet. No, unfortunately you not. But um, it sounds like we're at least giving the owner, Chef Salar, a 10 mm-hmm. out of 10, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good to it's, hear. Uh, That's Salar, good yeah. to hear. Wow. And so, 
uh, this week we we spoke about you know uh, the dirty south, and we we talked mm-hmm. about meat ventures, which is you know kind of on pause right now. But now it's yeah. my pie with the deep dish pizza, so definitely food worth mentioning. Is there anything else we want to talk about, Jeff? Um, I think that's it today. So uh, until next time, Irma's quote from Julia Child: "People who love to eat are always the best people." And that includes my brother, Chef Jeff, of course, me, and uh, you as well, if you love to eat food worth mentioning. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right. Take care. Excellent. You've been listening to Santos Brothers Eat. Food worth mentioning. 